Hello, today I'm going to try to explain Windows 8 changes from Windows 7. This is geared towards Windows 7 users that are scared off by Windows 8. So, without further ado, let's get started. It, it loads fairly quickly, but you can see here. Okay, so here's the login screen. So we just click here and enter in your password. Alright, so here's the start screen that usually freaks people out, but there's nothing to be worried about here. If you want your desktop, click desktop. And this, this start button right here, if you click that, it takes you back to the start screen. And that start button was added in Windows 8.1. Before then, that, there was a hot corner in the place of that button. So let's just go into an application. We'll use Photos in the ex as an example. So this is a Metro application. Notice that they run full screen. For some reason this is taking a while to load it. It shouldn't, but oh well. Okay, I'm now going to cover the hot corners concept for switching between applications. This right here is the Metro taskbar, as I'd call it. It allows you to switch between applications, and if you right click, you can close them. Uh, if you just use this hot corner here, it switches between applications. You have to drag down to get this, and you can always get to start from there. You can also, this hot corner right here will show the start button. The other thing over here, this hot corner will show the the settings menu over here. So an example right here, to show off your computer you can hit the power button to change volume and brightness. You can click here. This is the Metro com control panels I call it. One thing I want to point out here, uh, Windows 8 is tightly integrated with Microsoft accounts. So right here you by default being a Microsoft account you can switch to a local account here. And that might be useful if you have a long password for your Microsoft account and don't want to type that in while ma maintaining security. I certainly don't want to do that because this is a virtual machine and virtual machines for demonstration purposes don't need long passwords. Okay, the next thing I want to do is some key shortcuts. <coughs> First of all, the Windows key will open up the Metro start page to open an application to start typing. So here's Chrome for instance. And you can see Chrome will just launch on the desktop and it'll go the Metro interface will go away at this point. So here's Google Chrome, which is still loading. Okay, I'll close out of that. Next shortcut, Win key W will allow you to search for settings here. So let's think, Windows Update, and you can check for updates. Notice this, these ones are from the Metro control panel, and these are desktop control panel items for Windows Update. Next shortcut, Win key R, will open the Run dialog here, very useful. And that works inside Metro applications, so here's Photos, Win key R still works. Uh, next shortcut is Win key X, and that will open up some th a menu for system administrators mainly. Uh, so you can get to the Mobility Center, Power Options, Event Viewer, System, Device Manager, Command Prompt, Task Manager, Control Panel, etc. You can also shut down or restart from here. Uh, next thing is I want to show some changes in Windows Explorer. So you can see right here, first thing to note is that there's a, a new ribbon view here for setting ta selecting tasks. So we'll go to documents, you can see 
Home, Share, and View tabs on the ribbon. Uh, the file menu has two new interesting functions. You can open a command prompt, and you can just open it as a regular user or as an administrator. So here, you can see it opened it in our documents folder, which is where we are here. Very useful. And the same thing is true with PowerShell. So, that is the, the major things that I would expect a user to be aware of in Windows 8. Beyond that, it's really just rebranded Windows 7. The Metro interface is the main change. Uh, the, the final thing to note is that there is the Windows Store here, which allows you to add or purchase applications. Depends on if they're free or not. So, let's just go to our settings so we can shut down this operating system.